Aloha and welcome to HOMA's Elements of Art series. In this video, we will look at the magic of color while enjoying an array of artwork from the museum's collection, which illustrate color and its dynamic potential as a building block of all art. Pause the video at any time so that your group may reflect and respond. Color is one of the building blocks or elements of art. And just like a writer uses words to create stories, artists use elements to make artwork. Color is one of these very important elements, along with line, shape, space, texture, value, and form. Artists generally use at least two to three of these elements in any artwork. Our eyes can be drawn to certain parts of an artwork just by the way an artist chooses to use color. Color exists because of light, and only when there is light. Think about the difference between a dark room at night versus a sunlit room during the day. How many more colors do you see? The sun's light, a white light, is part of the spectrum of energy that the sun gives off as waves. The human eye and brain perceives these light waves as the colors in rainbows. When light hits an object, some of that light is absorbed and some of it is reflected. The light that is reflected off of an object is what we see as its color. Color is a way that we describe an object based on the way that it reflects or emits light. When thinking about color and artwork, there are a few key terms to know. Hue, chroma, value. Hue, this is another word for color. For example, crayons are wax sticks of various hues. Chroma refers to the purity, intensity, brightness, or saturation of a color. Adding gray to a color is a way to lower its brightness. Think about a sunny day and how bright the colors of a landscape can be. compared to a day when the sun is covered over by rain and clouds. Value refers to the degree of lightness or darkness in a color. For example, dark blue looks darker than light blue. A color's value can be adjusted by adding white, black, or both black and white. By adding white to any color, you produce a different tint of that hue. By adding black to any color, you produce a different shade of that hue. By adding black and white, or the combination of both, gray, to a color, you produce a new tone. Sometimes an artwork will be made up of a variety of tints, shades, and tones, all from a single hue. An artwork like this would be referred to as monochromatic, or one color. Color is one of the ways that shapes are created. How many different color shapes do you see in this monochromatic artwork? Play around with a favorite color and add white, black, and or gray to see what happens. Red, yellow, and blue are generally thought of as primary colors or primary hues because it was thought that they cannot be made from the mixing of other colors. 
these three primary colors can be mixed together to create just about every other color. If you mix two of the primary colors together in equal amounts, you will get the secondary colors. Green, orange, and violet are known as the secondary colors. Green, for example, is made by mixing equal amounts of yellow and blue. Another fun way to think about primary hues is through these colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. These hues, together with black, are used for all modern printing and can likely be found inside the printers that are used in the classroom or library at your school. Mixing this assortment of colors can create an even broader range of colors than is possible with red, yellow, and blue. One of the traditional primary colors, red, can actually be made by mixing magenta and yellow. So red is and is not a primary. Let's look at some rainbows. Rainbows are caused by the effects of light in water droplets. What colors do you see? One common way that we categorize color is by temperature. Reds, oranges, and yellows are referred to as warm because they can remind us of a campfire or a warm sunny day. Purples, blues, and greens are referred to as cool colors because they can remind us of cool ocean water or chilly rainy days. How do we categorize colors such as browns, blacks, and grays? These are called neutral colors because they are not associated with specific hues. Look for neutral colors here. And now look for them here. How we experience color depends on that color's surroundings. What is different here? When certain colors are together, they can seem to vibrate and move. Do colors have meaning? Think about street lights or a stop sign. What does the color red mean when you see it there? Can colors affect mood? How do this painting's colors make you feel? What about this one?
Is there a color or combination of colors that makes you happy just by being near it? What are the colors of your favorite outfit? If you could walk into one of these three scrolls, which one would you choose? Would you need to bring a coat to stay warm? Does the color help you to know that? Look for some color in the scroll on the left side. Do you see that color becoming a bird? Choose a color that you like and look for it everywhere. Take note of your discoveries. How many places did you see that color in one day? And the next time you're at the museum, see if you can find that color in each gallery.